Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of acoustic, looking at songs that feature acoustic instruments. We've checked out uh, Chelsea Wolf yesterday. Everything on that song was acoustic. That's what I'm looking for this week. We're going to be diving into some Katyra and... I apologize about this pronunciation. Jez Natura Son Jessimesmo, I believe is what the song is called. It comes off of their 2020 album, which I'm not going to try to pronounce. That one's just a bit too lengthy, and my Portuguese is not fantastic to begin with. Portuguese pronunciation, I, I can't speak the language at all. Let's dive into this and see what Katyra is bringing to the table today. I like how there's changing inflection on the 16th note picking on the guitars. It's creating, I think, these unintentional accent points, which is putting contrast into the constant sounds. That's a fun little idea. We have a bit of a moving melody in the background. I can't place the timbre though. Oh, it's a synth. what it is. The drum production is kind of flat on this, and I'm curious if it isn't the instrumentation that just has different timbres and what I'm expecting to a kit.
like the rhythmic switch up here. It isn't a lot. There's still a rigidity to the eighth notes instead of sixteenth, but having some quarter notes in there really helps with the flow of it. That's funky. Nice bit of syncopation in there. The woodwinds in the back are a nice touch. The staggered breathing is either really good or it's digital. <laughs> That's fun too. Yeah, very cool group of uh, percussion, auxiliary percussion they have going on here. I like how we still have the guitar in the back prior to this section, but it was primarily playing this rhythm on the chord. So it was also a rhythmic primary instrument, just like all the percussionists joined in. What's neat is I think there is some depth here if you want to dig into it, like this little melody we have on this guitar. Beautiful idea. But it's also a song I think that's primarily designed. Wasn't expecting a little duet. Oh, also the break, the pacing of this. I think it was primarily designed to be emotionally connected with rather than intellectually. Well, that's ominous.
so the build up into this was production. I thought we had shifted to distorted guitars, but this, these are just acoustics. on goes into the double time. it just to go up. Yeah, I was just expecting this riff up a third maybe, but we got an entirely new idea. say some really interesting timing stuff going on here. By interesting I mean out of sync. I think to, uh, to start this analysis segment off, I just want to talk about a, a subjective negative element to me, which is the raw time. There's, there's quite a few sections in here where the different band members get out of sync with each other. Drums coming in just a little fast, guitar is dragging just a little bit. Um, and we actually hear it on a majority of the drum fills. I think it's kind of wild. The drummer is fairly consistent as long as they play the same thing over and over. But the minute that we put a, a period at the end of a phrase and throw a fill in there, things have <laughs> a tendency to get a bit choppy. I'm not sure what's up with that, but there at the end, sure enough, we had a fill come in and it was very rough temporally. And this makes it really difficult for me to click with it. I don't think music needs to be perfect. But, I mean, a lot of it could could do with my upbringing too, right? With, uh, you know, my academic uh, history with music. I, I certainly see an angle of, 
of rawness being a positive component of a song. And we're actually going to touch on that a little bit later where I think a raw part worked kind of well for it. But when it comes to timing like this, no performance is going to be perfect. And I like how this at least sounds like it was done in one take. This sounds like a live performance or something close to it more so than you know recording five or six different takes of every four bar phrase and putting all the best ones together and creating a very clinical perfect idea of a song uh, i do prefer this approach to it and i think generally it sounds better but again coming from my background when when I hear something like this, where it's not one flub, it's, like I said, pretty consistent with the drum fills. To me, that's a lack of, of practice. You know, if I know it's a totally different genre, totally different atmosphere, but if you heard uh, an orchestra have as many timing issues as they did, I don't think it would be a, a positive spin on it. It sounds better because it's raw. No. No, those people need to practice. They didn't put the time in to perform the work. Um, and, you know, like I said, it's it's different. And maybe it's not fair to bring that mentality into this. And I know this isn't the first, especially black metal band, that I've called out timing things uh, on. Do metal's another one, although I'm a bit more forgiving because of the freaking time signature or tempos in doom metal just how do you play so slow <laughs> the fact that they keep in time for as often as they do is kind of impressive uh, that ends up being a bit of an inversion of the of my feeling towards it but when it comes to black metal like this it doesn't need to be perfect but i expect a little bit more perfection to it a little bit more of a showcase that you're up to, to task here, that you put the time in to master what you... And the thing is, too, is that this is what you've created. And, and that brings another thing to it, right? I intention. is this, this is obviously what they wanted out of it. So who am I to say that it's wrong? If their intention is to have rough rhythmic things every two or three minutes, they've nailed the execution, in which case... I'm telling them that, that they made their own art wrong, which is just bonkers. <laughs> I, I suppose that is very different from an, an orchestra, which tends to play somebody else's music. And their in, their idea that they've envisioned is probably a bit stricter on time. So, again, it's not it's not a good one-to-one -one analogy. But, you know, I, I spent over a decade getting it drilled into my head of, of perfection. You practice until you can play it perfectly. Mistakes are going to happen, but they better not happen often. You know, you practice to make sure you iron those mistakes out. And to hear, I, I counted at least six different areas where the bands got out of sync, even the final note, which to me makes it less effective. That final note should have been this, this ultimate statement, this big period at the end of the song. And, Everybody came in at different times, like the piano, the guitars, the drums, all of them just slightly off from each other. And and to me, that undermines the emotional weight of it. And I know, you know, like I said, this is subjective. This is just my opinion on it. But, I mean, I, I listen to music. I, like I said, I brought this up with black metal before, and it, it diminishes my, my enjoyment 100%. And it might not be fair. But you know, like I said, that's just so ingrained into me. I mean, even with like dissonance, y'all have been trying to get me into microtonal music and, uh, you know, noisy dissonance stuff for the better part of half a decade now. And it just keeps bouncing off of me because those kind of sounds are things that are used generally in, in my backgrounds. Rare. They're used sparingly. That's the word I wanted. Um, and that when you do hear them, it means things are out of tune. It, you know, it's, it's not the way that it should have been. Uh, instruments need to be tuned better. The, the musicians need to prepare better. It's just something that's just burned into me from playing, you know, years of classical and jazz. It's not fair to bring that baggage in, but it's, it's how I relate to those sounds. And so when I hear this band drop the beat, people dragging, people rushing, uh, complete chaos... Uh, rhythmically, temporally in places, 
They, they catch it real quick. I'll give them credit for that. It doesn't dismantle the song. They usually catch the mistake and line back up rather quickly, usually within the bar. But yeah, it's just like, dang, what would two more days of practice done for this song on, on each, you know, each person put in another four hours a day for two days, another eight hours of practice. Well, what could that, what could that have done for this? Uh, how much subjectively better would it have sounded? And so, you know, that's, uh, I'm sure there's going to be, be, be people who have the opposite opinion of that. That's perfectly fine, man. We all have our biases, our tastes and stuff, but I mean, it happens so much. There's no way I could have started this section without it. But, uh, you know, I, I mentioned that there's an inversion of this too. Something in here that was raw and wrong in, in a traditional classical sense, but ended up kind of working. And that's the, the vocals. You may have seen uh, some facial expressions, some body language the first time the vocals came in. They were out of tune, to put it mildly, clashing heavily, tons of dissonance present with them. But it kind of grew on me in the same way that, uh, oh, what's his name? Greg, we've checked him out on the channel. Palms, maybe Palms was the song. Greg Freeman, Palms was the song. Um, the way that that type of, of being out of tune can kind of add to a song. It presents a, a rawness of character. And I think sometimes, depending on the type of delivery, that can come off really well. Uh, something like Greg Freeman with that song we checked out, I think was mostly purely acoustic. Uh, the lyrics are very down to earth. And so having the intonation there just kind of added to that. This isn't a trained singer. He's just some dude. And honestly, I, I don't know if it was a, a choice to constantly sing with dissonance or if he just can't sing in tune with things. Uh, regardless, though, the end result feels just very, very indie. Very, you know, I want to make music and I might not be the best at it, but I got things I need to say and I want to do it to music, so I'm going to do it. And that sort of sincerity, I think, comes across well for me. And it kind of works here, too. A lot of this song feels, I mean, it, it's folk black metal, right? But because we don't have the electronic side of things and it's all acoustic, it feels more like folk music of old. We have a lot of the auxiliary percussion in here. Uh, we just have acoustic guitars. There's a lot of things that feel like the song has been rerouted to its roots. It's, it's caught back up to its roots. I don't, I don't know the good phrase for that. But it doesn't feel so much like metal that kind of has some folk ideas to it. This feels like proper folk music in a sense that's been influenced by metal. Uh, and to me, that's a very different thing than metal with a bit of folk influence to it. And so the vocals coming off like this actually works really well in selling the idea to me that these aren't properly trained vocalists, that this is just you know, hypothetically, fictionally, maybe the, the music of their people, uh, of their culture. Um, and, and they're not trained. They don't go to school for this. It's just something you learn. And, and, you know, much like, uh, folk music in, in the past, right? Every region, every culture had their own folk music, their own, um, even, even, uh, dang, what is it called? Uh, tunings, if you want to call it that. Um, different sets of notes, different ways to break up an octave. Um, you know, it's, it's very different from the very modern homogenized Western 12 tone that shows up pretty much everywhere now. Uh, but there's a lot of variety back then. Uh, and this could just be seen as that this, this isn't uh, out of tune or dissonant to this hypothetical culture. This is just the way they make music. It's how they perceive good music to be. Uh, and, and just the whole concept of this gets sold to me. 
because of it. Again, it's all hypothetical. This is a story I've put to the song. I have no idea who Katyra are or what's influenced them or anything like this, what this song is supposed to be. But that's the story I get with it. And the vocals being like this add to that from an artistic perspective. And I really appreciate that in a way that the rhythmic element just doesn't. Um, and so, you know, context matters. Sometimes raw things are good. Sometimes raw things are not good. All of it's subjective and those don't have to line up. Sometimes I can enjoy a raw thing, but, in, uh, you know, dislike a, a different raw component of a song. Raw is becoming to be a really weird word. I don't think it sounds English anymore. Um, but yeah, so I, I thought that was cool. Moving on. This is black metal, though. In its composition. 16th notes everywhere, blast beats, alternating bass kicks. Uh, even harsh vocals, right? But I think that it creates a very... Very different flavor being done acoustically. One of the things that makes black metal what it is, especially if you're listening to anything outside of the very small end of the spectrum of fidelity, at the you know the most high fidelity, clear uh, production in black metal. Everything else gets kind of fuzzy. You have varying degrees of fuzziness down to like the toilet bowl production in lo-fi black metal. But even in the middle, it's kind of hard to hear details of guitar work. This is because the overdrive, the distortion, the fuzz, the compression, everything can uh, get rid of the, the characteristics of, of a sound. And sometimes you'll even get rid of the attack itself. So you just get this wall of pitch, minor fluctuations in it, little bumps you know, every every pick, but you're not getting that, 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 that the harshness of the pick. You've softened that up through the production. Um, and what I love about this is that you don't get that opportunity. So a lot of the human element comes out in this. I mentioned it right at the beginning that during the, the 16th note picking on the guitar, some of the picks are harsher. They have more accent to them than others. And I couldn't really pick up a pattern to it. It almost just sounds like the human idea. You know, we aren't perfect. We're not going to have the exact same force on every single strum. And so there's going to create, it's going to create this varying levels of intensity. You know, uh, digital music makers, y'all know this as velocity, right? Um, and it creates rhythms in the guitar work pulses, uh, rhythmic phrases, grooves even at times that would not be there if they were playing electric guitars with all of the effects pedals and the production I put on top of it. And so it creates something dynamic. It creates something with contrast that wouldn't be there in the usual environment for this sound. And I find that to be awesome. <laughs> Primarily because it's one of those things that I, you know, I, I kind of lean into with black metal is the, especially third wave stuff. It's just the consistency of it all the time. There's just no dynamics to it. And this sort of solves that by bringing in the human nature for inconsistency. Now, I wish there was a bit more of a pattern, a, a, a reason, a... <laughs> Uh, some some thought put behind it, but just the simple idea of having dynamic accents in it adds a lot to it, I think, and it creates interesting grooves and rhythms that go against what the drums are doing. It creates for some interesting ideas, but the other thing that the lack of production opens up is my ability to hear the melody, which is just like... Yes. You know, I talk about this, right? Black metal does some cool things harmonically. They do some cool things melodically. I just can't ever hear it past the wall of noise. That white noise fuzz blocks my ability to hear it a majority of time. And this, I get to hear the composition rather than the production. And to me, that's, that's important. 
I don't think I've ever worded it like that before, but I think I'm going to start using that phrase now because it's it's exactly what it is. Some people really dig the production of a song, the atmosphere of it. They could care less what is actually played as long as the way it's presented fits what they're looking for. Black metal, post metal even sometimes, you're going to get these really oppressive moods. And a lot of that comes from the sound more so than the playing. And I, I'm the opposite. I'll take a tasty atmosphere, but it needs to be paired with strong composition too. I want to hear what all the instruments are playing, not just the sounds they're creating. And this gives me the inversion of most black metal. I get to hear the notes. And I think that's pretty cool. I like what they're doing even sometimes. There's some really cool melodies in here. Especially when you realize that the pedal tone can sort of be erased, uh, like it comes into your ear and you just dismiss it as garbage information like we do with like 90% of the sounds that come in. If we actually paid attention to everything we heard, I don't know, I think we'd go crazy. Our brains naturally have a way of, of assessing if, if information is important and if it isn't we just immediately dismiss it and we only focus on what uh, needs our attention. And I have gotten pretty good at just dismissing pedal tone and metal uh, and hearing the melody that's created from everything that isn't the pedal tone. The pedal tone gives it that cool metal edge. It's the rule of cool thing. It sounds great, but the melody tends to be everything outside of that, where the pedal tone is more of a, a foundational thing, a, a floor, a sonic floor for the song. And there's some really cool melodies in here, too. Some nice movement, uh, some harmonic ideas that are kind of outside the box. I dig a lot of that. I do. I think it's very cool. And then on top of that, we also have the piano and a synth, maybe. I'm not entirely sure what that instrument was. Uh, maybe a violin. I don't know. There's some, uh, some other instruments that provide ornamentation and harmonic ideas, chords being presented underneath. Uh, there, oh, there's some woodwinds in here that I mentioned might have been digital, just because they held these notes out forever. Uh, could have just been really good staggered breathing or circulatory breathing. Hadn't considered that. Um, and just creating these, these sonic floors for the melody to create interesting harmonies off of. Like, it's just really great writing from that perspective. Uh, some really cool ideas coming out of that. And I appreciate being able to hear them. Like, that's a huge boon for me. If you want me to listen to black metal, do it acoustically. Uh, I'll, I'll get into that a majority of the time, I think. Two things left, I think, then we're going to wrap this up. One is the middle section. We got a plethora of auxiliary percussion coming in there towards the end. And well, I guess towards the middle, it's like eight minutes in. I like this part. We got some cool timbres in here. We got a lot of rhythmic information. We started introducing groovier ideas with counter rhythms, polyrhythms. Um, so that was kind of neat. We also have the ways that all these instruments are stacking up on top of each other. I even mentioned here that the guitar at this point is primarily playing a single chord in a rhythmic fashion. So it is also a rhythmic instrument primarily alongside the rest of the percussion here. Just a very cool idea altogether. And then putting the vocals on top of that I thought worked really well. This section does go on quite a bit though. And I don't think there's as much movement here as there was in the first six minutes of the song. I do think I was getting just a little fatigued with it. It might just have been me and not something that is uh, a, a part of the pacing of the song. I could have just might, might wanted it to move a little faster. Maybe it's just the mood I'm in today. I don't know. But we did get some cool guitar solos and duets on top of this idea eventually too. And I like how they took their time. Uh, like I said, there was even like a one and a half bar break we get the guitar solos, we get the duet for a little bit, and, uh, the, we get a solo guitar for another like three beats, and then just silence, really allowing the section to breathe before a melody came back in. I thought that was very well done. But the section as a whole felt like it dragged just a hair bit. And yeah, like I said, could be me. The other thing I want to bring up is the vocals. I mentioned that I like the cleans. How do I want to word this? 
I don't want to be mean, you know, right? I think I would have enjoyed clean vocals in tune with the band a little more from a purely musical perspective. Like I said, artistically, I think that the out-of-tune vocals, they kind of work. The harsh vocals never clicked with me. I think they worked at that moment where I thought we went electric. I guess that was like about minute six or seven, something like that. The harsh vocals kind of worked there. Things got heavy somehow. I'm still not entirely sure what happened there. But that's the only place I think where they really clicked with me. We had some throat singing in here that I thought worked well, especially since it was a bit more in tune, or at least the perceived pitch felt more in tune with the uh, what the guitars and pianos were playing. Um, but I did like the layered harshes and cleans towards the end. That worked really well. Overall, I, th I think there's a lot of variety on it, but not everything clicks with me. So while I appreciate all, you know, all the different sounds we get out of the vocal element, which actually works well with all the different sounds we get out of the percussion, this is actually just a, an extremely varied uh, song from, from a timbre perspective. There's a lot of instruments at play here, and I, I definitely respect that. Not all of the timbres clicked with me, and it made me want to move on to the next or return to one that I found more favorable and stuff like that. So that's always a double-edged sword though. It means that the, that the, if I don't like something, I might like what comes next, but also if I do like something, it isn't going to stick around long. We're going to move on to something else. So like I said, double-edged sword, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's not, but I always appreciate the variety. I think that's fun and a lot better than just growls for the whole song. So I appreciate the diversity they put on display here. I'm going to check out some lyrics and we're going to wrap this one up. This seems to be a song about death, but not from, not even from a negative or positive perspective. It's a neutral thing, sort of like, uh, you know, uh, the neutral concept of the circle of life, right? It doesn't talk about death as a positive thing or negative thing, really. It just talks about how it is a thing. It is something that everyone will experience. And that sort of neutrality is what is on display here. We have somebody on their death deathbed thinking about their life says, as I choke with a myriad of failures, dreams take more shape than waking life. Bathed in the arrows of the sun, drenched in nothing but light, I feel myself emptying towards the end. And so we get a little bit of this concept of returning to nature, of becoming one with whatever, you know, back to stardust or, or part of uh, you know, Mother Earth's energy or returning to the soil, whatever your, uh, you know, your flavor of, of this concept is. It's about, you know, uh, transference of energy. Oh, actually, that's kind of neat. I never thought about that before. If your creation, not scientifically, more of a, a spiritual element, um, takes energy for your form to be created when you die you give that energy back huh anyways that doesn't have really much to do with anything here I just think it's kind of a neat idea because it uh it, it talks about energy is, is zero sum which is how energy tends to work with kinetic and potential always transferring you can't make energy it has to come from somewhere. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> huh. Anyways, uh, like I said, they're kind of thinking about stuff. It says, all the colors are reduced to black and white, but the noise becomes music, and I stand as tall as the trees. He says, the perception of time, the nature of thought. It's the denaturation of self, the dismantling of the human form. And now they speak about how they are one with nature. It says, now I dream of rivers and winds. I only see the ocean, the sand, the sea. We are animals. 
We are doubt, the children, the winds, mother, the earth. Father is terror. Interesting there that father isn't part of nature, but is an emotion. Not sure what to read into that, but it stands out, that's for sure. And then goes to the absolute end, not just their death, but humanity's death, when there is nothing more but water in all dwellings. From the traces of our extinction, silence will inherit its rise. And when there is nothing left but the end and its dawn in stillness of desolation, silence will be our redemption. You were an animal, we live only in doubt. Our offspring have already breathed their last, and peace is back. So I think this final section uh, speaks about the politics of the song quite a bit. Everything else is more about the spiritual angle of this narrator, but the final stanza here says that humans have disrupted nature's peace, and that when humanity is dead, nature will finally understand uh, peace, it'll have its silence from, from the plague of humanity. And that will be what redeems us. We can't find redemption. We, we can't make things right with our planet until we're gone. That is a powerful statement. <laughs> Probably quite true as well. I, I don't like to, to seem like a pessimist or a doomer or anything like that, but I find it very difficult, even thinking about generations past me, where there isn't uh, somebody with power who decides to harm uh, more of this planet. It's just, it's something that happens all the time and not something I see changing. So the idea that this planet will only be healed when uh, humanity has gone, I mean, I kind of hope we can be better than that eventually, but it's really hard for me to perceive a, a utopian type of future based on my limited experience with our species. Anyways, that got a bit dark. I think the song works well. It's very spiritual. Uh, it's very much being in tune with nature, bringing in the folk music element of that I think works well. And I think that having the acoustic music is perfect for this. I think that the message would have been weakened a bit to have been played by electric instruments um you know heavy guitars and, and stuff like that it just it wouldn't have felt right and this this does those are my thoughts oh geez can i do this again katira's jesnato son jesse mesmo I probably pronounced that a lot better at the beginning of the video. That's what 40 minutes between the last time I heard the pronunciation will do. <laughs> Just start slipping. <laughs> All right. What are your thoughts, though? Did you enjoy this? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything that you would like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe just have your own perspective or interpretation of the track. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. We do have a special selection coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.